down the bright straight road towards a new understanding in Europe. And so at Hitler's Munich headquarters, the agreement that has made the biggest headlines since the armistice. Let no man say that too high a price has been paid for the peace of the world until he has searched his own soul and found himself willing to risk war and the lives of those nearest and dearest to him. Let no man criticize the bargain that the statesmen of Britain and France have struck until he has attempted to add up the total price that might have had to be paid for any other settlement, a price in death and destruction. That price will not be paid. There will be peace. It's the greatest diplomatic triumph of modern time. The scene changes to London as Downing Street expresses the nation's gratitude, also to the lady who shares the Prime Minister's hopes and fears when Mrs Chamberlain comes out for a walk in the park. And the Prime Minister comes home, home to an empire filled with joy and relief, home to a welcome that he will never forget. I want to say that the settlement of the Czechoslovakian problem, which has now been achieved, is, in my view, only the prelude to a larger settlement in which all Europe may find peace. This morning, I had another talk with the German Chancellor, Herr Hitler. And here is the paper which bears his name upon it as well as mine. Some of you perhaps have already heard what it contains, but I would just like to read it to you. We, the German Führer and Chancellor and the British Prime Minister, have had a further meeting today and are agreed in recognizing that the question of Anglo-German relations is of the first importance for the two countries and for Europe. We regard the agreement signed last night and the Anglo-German naval agreement as symbolic of the desire of our two peoples never to go to war with one another again. again. We are resolved that the method of consultation yeah, yeah. shall be the method adopted yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. to deal with any other questions that may concern our two countries, and we are determined <coughs> to continue our efforts to remove possible sources of difference and thus to contribute to assure the peace of Europe. From Heston, a triumphal progress as Mr. Chamberlain drives to report immediately to His Majesty the King at Buckingham Palace. And in this, perhaps the most historic spot of the Empire's capital, let the people themselves speak what is in their hearts.